Last time we derived these four equations where you understand how the charge, current, and the voltage change with respect to time. These are the transient equations and they look pretty scary. So this episode is trying to make them look <laughs> less scary. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and make you understand the equation for charge and the current intuitively and the voltage equations will follow accordingly. So let's concentrate on the charge and the current. Okay, the goal is to try and make this equation less scary. So what we'll do is we'll substitute different different values of t and see what happens. Let's first substitute t equal to zero and see what happens. That will be case number one. So if I put t equal to zero, the charge at t equal to zero is just going to be EC times one minus e to the power zero because this whole thing is going to become zero and e to the power zero is just one and one one cancels and you get charge equal to zero and that makes a lot of sense because we predicted or in fact we actually took the charge on the capacitor to be zero at time t equal to zero because remember at time t equal to zero we just closed the switch so that's fine let's consider another case of time let's put time t is equal to let's say infinity and see what's going to happen well this time charge q is going to be ec times 1 minus e to the power minus infinity and e to the power minus infinity or anything to the power negative infinity is just zero so this fellow goes to zero that tells us that the charge at t equals infinity is just going to be e into c times 1 and e is the maximum voltage across the capacitor and this is the maximum charge. In fact, you know what? This is also something that we predicted in the first video where I gave you only the intuition. V, V is just E. Ooh, this tells us this is going to be the maximum charge on the capacitor. So now that make, makes sense. So you see this equation is producing the same result we got in the first video and it tells us now the value of Q everywhere in between. In fact, there's one more time that I'd be interested in and I want to discuss that in great detail. Before that, let's quickly do the current and see whether we get similar results for the current like what we expected. Let's put t equal to zero and see what happens. Thus, the current I is going to be E divided by R times one. And that's what we expected. We thought that when you close the switch, there's going to be a huge surge in the current. So this is exactly what we expected. So that makes a lot of sense. In fact, this is the maximum current. And let's put the second case. We're going to put t is equal to infinity. And so now we will get i equals e by r times e to the power minus infinity, which is just zero. This is zero. Everything is making sense. It's exactly like what we expected in our first video. So if you've understood that, that's amazing. Okay. All right. Now. I'm going to take one more case and that case is going to be for a particular time what we're going to do is we're going to wait for a time which is exactly equal to rc try to understand why i'm putting rc because there's a there's an rc in the denominator so if i put rc in the numerator i'm going to get minus one so let's just see what's going to happen this is something special first of all notice that r into c has a unit of ohms times the capacitance which is farad and ohm times farad is just seconds. So this is an expression for second. I mean, this is the unit of second. So I want to know what's going to happen when you substitute t is equal to rc. What's going to happen to my charge? So let's see. My charge is going to become ec times 1 minus e to the power minus 1. You can see that because you substitute rc over here. And e to the power minus 1 is a number that I often tend to remember. So I tend to remember this number and that number is 0.37. It's called as an appears base, whatever. So now if you substitute, we're gonna get charge Q as EC times one minus 0.37, which is just 0.63. So try to understand what's this, what this is telling us. It tells us that if you wait for a time which is exactly equal to RC, then our charge is going to climb up to 63% of the maximum charge. That's the maximum charge, right? EC. So this is just 
of the maximum charge. And since voltage has the same relationship, you can also say that the voltage climbs up to, so voltage across the capacitor also climbs up to 63% the maximum voltage. You can just check that yourself, okay? This time during which the charge or the voltage climbs up to 63%, we give a name to that, we call that as the time constant, oops, as the time constant of our circuit. This is called as time constant. And we can check what's going to happen with our current also if we wait for exactly one time constant and uh, often we write it as tau, time constant tau which is the same as RC. Let's see what happens to our current. Our current is just E by R times E to the power minus T by RC and therefore you're going to get just minus 1 and that will be E by R times 0.37 and therefore I is now going to be 0.37 or 37 percent of the initial value of its maximum value that's what I is going to be so you can think of time constant as the time it takes for our charge or the or the voltage to climb to 63 percent or for the current or the voltage across the resistor that's also fine to climb down to 37 37 percent of their initial value and that's what we call as time constants. So you know why this is important? Because you see if you look at this equation theoretically, it predicts that it's going to take infinite time for my current to become zero or, my, or for my capacitor to get fully charged. But that's just theoretical. More practically when you look at it, we really don't want our capacitor to get 100% charge. Maybe 99% charge or 99.9% .9 charge must be enough. So you see, using this concept of time constant, we can pretty much evaluate how much time it's going to take to charge up my capacitor to a very high value. If you take two time constants, so let's do that. If you take, if you wait for, let's do fourth one, you wait for t, t is equal to two times tau, then Q will be EC times one minus, you see, you're going to get E to the power minus two this time, right? Because you get two RC. That means you have to take 0.37 and raise it to the power 2. So this is just going to be 1 minus 0.37, the whole squared. And the charge on the capacitor is going to be now 0.86. So this tells us that our capacitor now is 86% charge. So it's 86% of the maximum. So we would say it's 86% charge. Okay. So now we can go ahead and wait for a long time. Maybe we will wait for something like 10 tau. Let's see what's going to happen now. You will see 10 tau. It's going to be very close to the maximum value. If you calculate, you're now going to get 1 minus 0.37 whole to the power 10. Can you see that? And that's going to be 99.995% the maximum value. And I'm pretty sure you agree with me that that is almost, for all practical purposes, 100% charged. So you see, although theoretically it's going to take infinite time, practically just wait for 10 tau. I don't even think you have to even wait for 10 tau. Even before that, we're going to say our capacitor is charged up fully. And the same thing you can do your current and you will see by the time you reach 10 tau, your current would have died out to almost zero. So let's take an example. Okay, let's take an example. Consider a case where the capacitance is, let's say, 100 microfarad. And let's say you use a, a resistor of something like, hmm, let's see, say, let's say you use 10 ohms. And suppose you want to charge up, and the voltage that you're charging it up to is, let's say, 10 volts. Theoretically, it should take infinite time, but we don't care about theoretical things. We want to talk about practicality. So let's calculate the time constant. The time constant is just going to be RC and R in this example is 10 and C in this example is 100 microfarad. So that's going to be a thousand microfarad, microsecond. That's going to be a millisecond. So what does this tell us? This tells us two things. Either we can say that it takes one millisecond for my capacitor 
to charge to 63% of its maximum value. Wait, what is maximum voltage? Well, the maximum voltage is 10 volt. So 63% of 10 means 6.3 volt. That's what it tells me. It tells me that if you wait for a millisecond, my capacitor gets charged to 6.3 volts. Or it also tells me that my current in the circuit, you see what was the initial current? Uh, the moment I close the switch, the current would be 10 divided by 10, which is one ampere. But after a millisecond, it's going to die out and become 37%. So it tells me that my current is going to be 37% of that initial value which is just going to be 3 which is just going to be 0.37 amperes you see this is very this is a very concrete answer and if you want to now know exactly how much time you have to wait for your capacitor to get almost 100% charge then you wait for 10 time constants so for full charge you have to wait for 10 time constants and that's going to be just 10 millisecond. So you know what, if you were to actually run this circuit within a blink of an eye, the capacitor would immediately charge up and the maximum current that would ever run in this circuit would be just one ampere. You can see that because the maximum is just 10 divided by 10. Okay, let's take a more powerful capacitor. What if we take a capacitor which has a capacitance of let's say a millifarad and imagine you were to charge that baby up all the way to a hundred volt now we need to be careful if you put a 10 ohm resistor then the initial surge of current that you get when you close the switch it's going to be a hundred by 10 it's going to be 10 amperes you need your circuit to handle 10 amperes because the, uh, the wires are going to get heated up and if you can't do that you better make sure you have a high enough resistance so that you know you don't have such a huge current flowing through so usually as the voltage goes goes up you tend to increase the resistance as well let's say you put a thousand ohms that's going to be keep that's going to make sure it's going to keep our circuit safe so what's going to be the time constant over here for the time constant for this circuit it's going to be again rc well that will be just one milli farad times thousand that's going to be about one second because a million a thousand just cancels out so again even notice even now it's pretty small so it tells you within one second my capacitor will have a voltage of 63 percent the maximum value that's 63 volts okay or you can equivalently calculate the charge and 63 percent charge and at that moment our current would be 37 percent of the maximum value uh, that's lovely 0 0.037 if i'm not wrong because 0 0.01 is the initial so that's how you work with capacitors and and, and this and, and this one if you really want to taste this thing to get completely charged you have to wait for about for full charge you have to wait for about 10 seconds so i hope i was able to give you some intuition behind those deadly equations and uh, yeah see you next time